In this video, the Vanquish stance is getting its first upgrades. It's definitely getting this set of trio aluminum wheels to replace the plastic bead locks that it comes with. But we're gonna look also to see if these green and Jora silicone inserts are better than we think for these two-stage foams that the tires come with. Um, a lot of people say that the two-stage foams that come in this are potentially some of the best that you can get and don't really need replacing. And so we're gonna just evaluate as we put this uh, upgrades together to see which one of these two we're gonna go with, but we're definitely gonna slam some wheels on it. Let's get started. We gotta get these old tires and wheels off. And now if anybody out there is smarter than me and can explain this, why did Vanquish go with a non-standard nut size? So if you're new to the Vanquish, a seven millimeter is the standard nut that is used on basically every RC vehicle, tent scale, tent scale RC vehicle. And for some reason they went with one, it's, it's still not an eight. So this is, this is a seven on this side, doesn't fit. This is an eight on this side. And man, that is loose. So it's not really an eight either. So the eight millimeter does work, but I don't understand it. But you need to know this if you get this truck that if you're out running around with buddies and you know, maybe you lose a nut on the trail, you need a different one. Cause the shaft in here is actually bigger than most other ones. So you're not gonna be able to just use a spare nut from anything yet. Yeah probably gonna need to pick up a few spares of these just in case. Now what I do like, backside of this tire does have two millimeter hardware. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight screws back there holding it all on, which is a lot, but we can hit that with our handy dandy screwdriver and get these off real fast. With the wheel off, let's pull this insert out and see what it looks like. There you can clearly say that, see the two stage. So it is a very soft foam on the outside and it's like a, almost like a neoprene or something on the inside. Definitely different than what you would normally get. When we compare it versus the Enjoy insert, we have a kind of have an issue here. We, people have noted that these tires from Vanquish are a little bit tall maybe. Maybe they're kind of taller than the average. And uh, this is kind of showing it here. I think if we put those Injora inserts in there, it's going to be a lot of leftover room in that tire. So we might not want to do that. The other thing I note is that this tire has like no body to it whatsoever. It is a very small, thin sheen of rubber on the outside there. I don't know if I've ever had a tire that was so floppy and just didn't exist like this one so that's also going to play into our selection of foam and everything like that is uh it's not providing any of the support the rubber itself as a quick test you can see here in jora insert uh just the inside ring pushed in there to kind of keep everything centered uh you can tell this tire is just that little bit bigger it claims i believe a 4.75 but i believe it might be just a little tall and uh you probably can't see it here in the video but there's definitely some distance here between the top of the tire and that insert I don't know if it's enough to where it would actually cause a problem or not. Um, a little bit extra looseness there in the tread. But again, I think because of the height of these tires, we're going to have to go with the foams instead of the uh, Enjoy inserts, which I do like so much. Now, one other thing I'm going to do while I'm here, uh, this is mixed reviews, personal opinion. I have found for my uses, uh, better performance, better longevity and everything if I vent my tires. These tires do come unvented from the factory. So I am going to use this hole punch and punch four big old holes, one at every 90 degrees around the tire. While we're at this, you may be asking, why am I not actually changing the tires out on this truck too while we're here? And uh, that's because I've tested a lot and a lot of tires on this channel. And I can promise you that these are some of the best ready to run tires that you can get. And there's a lot of tires out there on the aftermarket that actually aren't as good. So we're gonna keep running these for now. Mm -hmm. 
as we're putting these on i always recommend to use some thread locker i can leave a link to this down in the video description but blue thread locker means that once you get those screws in there they're not going to fall out on you on the trail and uh, make you sad so that is what i do recommend I figured I'd address this here. I've had a couple of different people ask me why it is that I typically run these Treel wheels, different different varieties of them, but I'm just typically running with the Treel brand. And there's a couple different reasons for that. I've used a lot of different wheels from a lot of different manufacturers, SSD and Enjora. I've even had a used set of Vanquish wheels for a while, Ot6 wheels, obviously Treel, all sorts of different companies I've used over time. And these Treel wheels, look, they just look so good. The machining on them, the fit and finish the design itself i'm always a really big fan of and you can get them at a kind of a medium price they're not the super cheap like 20 dollars wheels they're in the middle you're not spending two three hundred dollars on a set for your whole vehicle you know but yet you're still gonna look really really good i like that as an example with these wheels it comes with this uh two millimeter hex hardware for the front and the rear i know that's not like scale hardware on the front and you could replace it if you wanted to but it means that these big button head screws that it uses are super robust they're not going to strip out on you i've never had any issues with quality of their wheels they always seem to mount up just nice so that's why in general i tend to run the trio if uh, anybody from Trio is watching, you should probably be sponsoring me. <laughs> um, no, I am not sponsored by Trio. I'm not affiliated with them in any shape, form, or fashion. I just tend to spend my money there, especially when it comes to RC crawler wheels specifically. Now, I'm almost done bolting these up. Let's get this finished and see what it looks like. Oh, no. You know how I talked about those nuts being really big? Oh. So, eight millimeter wrench, it's not really that thick wall of a socket, will not get down in there. I have this one as well. It tries, it tries to get in there, but it still doesn't quite get in there. I don't think it's gonna work. I can maybe grind it down just a little bit, or I need to be able to take these wheels apart and literally drill the center hole out. Or I need to find a thinner frickin' socket. Dang it. Dang it, Vanquish. Why do you run these big frickin' nuts and these big frickin' stub axles? It's not like anybody ever really breaks the stub axle off of a dang crawler axle. Well, here is one not 100% awesome solution. It is a half inch uh, speed bit set to take the total diameter of this up to a half inch and then the hub that's in there you basically just need to get rid of that hub centering ring that's on there and then you're in business doing a quick search online shows that there are mip and some other folks do make a thin walled eight millimeter socket that'll actually get you down in there uh, the, other th the other thing people have done is they've actually taken these tips and actually just ground them down to almost nothing so that they would actually fit in there as well i may try that too just for giggles but um yeah so these are some of the options that you have if you're also facing this same issue and here's what this looks like ground down enough to actually fit in there oh there's almost nothing left of it but it works and uh, hey if you need to you just need to keep this with you because if you're out crawling somewhere and you need to tighten or change a wheel or something you basically got one tool to do it uh, word to the wise this didn't last um, by the time you grind it thin enough to work it's actually too weak and immediately stripped so I had to find a uh, I have a steel one so the steel went ground it down and then it actually did the job so if you're going to do this skip past the aluminum straight to the steel you'll be in better shape but look at the wheels now oh man they look so good on here i love the gray i didn't want to try to get all matchy matchy with the green or the blue there's just it's always impossible to do so so i went with the gray it looks good those dual stage foams in there filling out the tires nicely now it's time to go give it a test so that'll be in a future video stay tuned hit the subscribe button coming up very quickly this truck just slightly modified like this so basically as it comes out of the box versus the red cat ascent fusion which one is better that is coming up so stay tuned thank you for watching and goodbye